This is the nasty customer that Lizzie Borden allegedly used to butcher her parents. Yes, this chopping tool. That Lizzie Borden. What you may not know is how it also helped Lizzie get away with murder. Here's the story of history's most celebrated murder weapon, Lizzie Borden's axe, or to split hairs, her hatchet. It happened in this house in Fall River, Massachusetts on August 4th, 1892. Somebody took a hatchet, crept up to the second floor guest room, and surprised 64-year-old Abby Borden. Down came the blade, a total of 19 times, although the first blow was probably fatal. But the hatchet had only started its morning's work. 70-year-old bank president Andrew Borden wasn't feeling well. He came home earlier than usual to lie down on the sitting room sofa. Up stepped that somebody, and down came the hatchet again and again, as some believe, until the handle snapped, sheared off by the sharp edges of the man's skull. So who on earth would whack away at two people with a hatchet until it broke off in a cranium? It's a man's weapon. Guns were men's weapons. Knives were men's weapons. Hatchets were men's weapons. Not women's. But there were no burly lumberjacks in sight. Only Andrew Borden's mild-mannered 32-year-old daughter, Lizzie. When detectives arrived on the scene, she greeted them with a peculiar calm. Police officer Fleet uh, came into the house, and uh, here's Andrew dead on the sofa. And he looks Lizzie in the eye and says, Miss Borden, where's your mother? And Lizzie looks him in the eye and says, She's not my mother, she's my stepmother. They soon enough found the stepmother where she fell between the dresser and the bed. Then, police found this hatchet head in a toolbox. But the killer, if it was not Lizzie herself, was nowhere to be found. She spent the night in that house. Lizzie spent the night in there. Now, if some crazed fiend came out of the atmosphere, went into the house, slaughtered her stepmother, chopped her father to pieces, and had not been found. Well, let me put it this way. I wouldn't have spent the night in that house if I was in bed with a machine gun. After giving contradictory testimony during the inquest, Lizzie Borden was charged with the brutal hatchet murders. The subsequent trial caused a sensation, like none before, and few since, thanks to the telegraph. Lizzie's was the first big murder trial of the electronic age. And what everyone was buzzing about was the sex of the defendant and the choice of weapon. Here was a timid, mousy churchgoer escorted into the courtroom by her minister. And here was a savage double murder inflicted by a common household hatchet. People just couldn't put the two together. A fact that was expertly manipulated by Lizzie's defense team, which included Andrew Jennings. Andrew Jennings at one point during the trial says that she was at home doing womanly things where she belonged. Ironing handkerchiefs, reading a magazine in the kitchen, having coffee and cookies for breakfast. She wasn't about to be wielding a hatchet. Not according to the defense's perception of what a Victorian woman was. That this was the murder weapon was never conclusively proven. Although expert witnesses attempted to do so in the most bizarre moment of the trial. From a satchel was produced the actual skull of Andrew Borden. They proceeded to work the hatchet blade into the gaping holes of the cranium. It fit. But the 12-man jury still couldn't put the dutiful daughter and the hatchet murders together. Lizzie was acquitted. After the trial, the hatchet head became the property of the exonerated party, Lizzie herself. She continued to have a hankering for hatchets, once, she chopped up a batch of firewood at a policeman's picnic, spooking everyone who looked on. But she would never swing this particular hatchet again. Lizzie gave it to her defense lawyer, along with the other evidence. When the trial was over, Andrew Jennings took physical evidence, forensic evidence. He brought them all home in a room that wasn't used by the family. He threw all these things in an old metal hip bath and covered it with a tarp and left it there for his lifetime. 
The so-called hip bath collection of evidence was then forgotten, even by the Jennings family, until the 1960s, when the lawyer's daughter discovered the metal tub and all its macabre contents in the attic. This hatchet head was still there, a mite rusty, but still as sharp as it was in 1892. As for Lizzie Borden, she lived in Fall River until her death in 1927. One of her young neighbors was the writer, Victoria Lincoln. And it's a marvelous anecdote. When she was a little girl, she said to her mother, a mother, how come we never see much of Miss Borden? And her mother paused and said, well, she wasn't very nice to her parents. Lizzie Borden's hatchet head and other evidence from the hip bath collection is on public display at the Historical Society of Fall River, Massachusetts. <laughs>